the blood. And blood can be thought of as an internal transport system for the body. It's our major uh, internal transport system for lots of things. It is life-sustaining, part of the cardiovascular system. So blood functions include transportation of materials, which you probably think about a lot, um, regulation through both the um, some of its temperature effects and through the fact that it is how the hormones get to where they're going, and protection. Our body defenses against pathogens are based primarily in our blood. So uh, blood transports oxygen and nutrients to body cells and transports metabolic waste to the lungs in the form of carbon dioxide and the kidneys in the form of uh, nitrogen containing waste. When it also transports hormones from the endocrine organs to the target organs. Regulations include body temperature by absorbing and distributing heat normal pH using buffers. Uh, we have an alkaline reserve of bicarbonate ions in our blood uh, and maintaining adequate fluid volume in the circulatory system to uh, get efficient delivery of materials. Uh, also protection, preventing blood loss. Uh, plasma proteins and platelets in the blood are going to initiate the process of clot formation that we'll look at. Uh, and again, preventing infection. Agents of immunity are carried in the blood including antibodies, complement proteins, and white blood cells. So blood is the only fluid tissue in the body. It is a type of connective tissue. It's matrix, uh, if you recall, connective tissues have a matrix and cellular component. Matrix is non-living fluid called plasma. The cells are living blood cells. The, probably more correctly referred to as formed elements because two out of three of the cells are not cells, true cells. Uh, but they are suspended in the plasma and those formed elements include erythrocytes, which are red blood cells, leukocytes, which are the true cells, white blood cells, and platelets, which would be fragments of a cell called the megakaryocyte. If we put blood into a centrifuge, we can split it into three layers. At the very bottom, approximately 45% of the whole blood, uh, we would have the erythrocytes, uh, and that number is, rep is represented by what is called the hematocrit. Uh, the normal values for that, or I should say the average values for that, are in, a ma in males about 47%, plus or minus 5%. Uh, and females 42 plus or minus 5%. And you can see those two numbers do overlap with the plus or minus. White blood cells and platelets are found in what is known as the buffy coat. It looks like a little, uh, little um, cloud in between the plasma layer and the uh, erythrocytes. And that plasma is on the top, which is about 55% of blood. So again, if you take a blood draw, put it in a centrifuge, spin it, you'll get a nice layer of plasma, a little fluffy, buffy coat, and the erythrocytes. I will say the buffy coat is much more exaggerated than what you actually see in uh, when you spin down blood. It is a sticky, opaque fluid with kind of a metallic taste to it. The color varies with the oxygen content from a scarlet to a dark red, but again, there is no blue blood. It just looks blue through your skin. pH should be between 7.35 and 7.45, makes up about 8% of your body weight. And the average volumes would be five to six liters in males and four to five liters in females. So the plasma is a straw, yellowish colored, sticky fluid, about 90% water, as are most um, body fluids. There are at least 100 dissolved solutes within it. Uh, some of the more important ones for us are nutrients, gases, hormones, waste, proteins, inorganic ions. Plasma proteins are most abundant solute. They uh, remain in the blood. They're not taken up by cells. Uh, 
And those proteins are produced primarily by the liver. Uh, the largest percentage-wise of those is albumin. And albumin functions as a carrier of other molecules, uh, also as a buffer, and contributes to osmotic pressure in the blood. So here, table 17.1 goes through uh, constituents of the blood. A plasma, sorry. And number two continues with that. I think I just went backwards. There we go. The formed elements, on the other hand, are the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. And only the white blood cells are true cells. Red blood cells do not have a nuclei or other organelles. They are fragments of a cell that's been released from the uh, bone marrow. And platelets are cell fragments. They have a little more in them than red blood cells, but platelets are parts of what are known as megakaryocytes released to the blood. So most of the formed elements survive in the bloodstream only a few days, and most blood cells originate in the bone marrow and do not divide. And they all originate in the bone marrow, but most do not divide. So here is an image of a microscope picture. You'll see a very similar one on the lower one on lab, in the lab on Thursday showing the formed elements, erythrocytes, platelets, eosinophils, specific white blood cells, uh, and even some pla uh, so platelets, red blood cells, the most abundant, then these monocytes, lymphocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, <coughs> and this is another neutrophil, would be the white blood cells. And I will pause there.